Hello everyone. This is the lecture number 24 of the lecture series of Neural Architecture. In this lecture, we will continue with the transverse stability of the ship. Specifically, I am going to cover a new topic, effect of loading, unloading and shifting of the cargo within the ship on the transverse stability. Let's start the discussion. A few things which we need to understand before starting the, the topic. Consider that uh, I am looking the ship in a transverse view and when I am going to add any cargo, when I have removed the cargo or when I have shifted the cargo within the ship, what is the effect of this all the things on the location of the center of gravity of the whole ship. I am repeating once again. I have one ship and I am going to add any cargo. I am going to remove any cargo or I am going to shift the cargo which is already present in the ship from one place to the another place within the ship. So what is the effect of this whole process is on the location of the center of gravity of the ship. Why we are doing this? If you remember that the stability of the ship is depends on the metacentric height. As we have discussed in the earlier classes that for the small angle stability we are considering the location or the distance between the K and M that will be remains a constant. If you want to find the value of a GM, you should know what is the value of a KM and that we are assuming for a particular ship KM is a remains constant and if you want to calculate the GM, so GM is equal to KM minus a KG. What I am discussing that Km is a constant and it means that a Gm is a totally depends on the location of the center of gravity from the keel. Consider the transverse view of the ship looks like this. You have a keel here, this is the center of gravity and this is the meta center. Consider that this G is the initial G when the ship is arriving in a port. When the ship arrived in the port, now some of the cargo we are going to discharge, some of the cargo we are going to add, some of the cargo we are shifting within the ship. So when you are doing this all the things, because of the loading, unloading and the shifting of the cargo, the location of the center of gravity may change. It may go up, it may go down. So if this is the condition, what will be the final metacentric height? Suppose if the center of gravity is a raised initial center of gravity, the new GM will be G1M. It means that the metacentric height has reduced or after the loading or removing or shifting the cargo, the new center of gravity has gone down below the old center of gravity or the initial center of gravity, the GM is going to increase that is the G2M. The stability of the ship is depends on this value only. So as I already discussed that for a particular ship, the range of the GM value is a fixed. If the GM is a too much high, then there might be chances that the ship is going to oscillate very fast that is called as a stiff ship as we have discussed earlier or the cargo is loaded in such a way that the center of gravity is raised the metacentric height is a G1M that is reduced so that time this GM is very small it is a positive but a small so in this case what will happen the ship is going to oscillate very slowly this type of a ship we will call as a tender ship. There might be chances that you have loaded a ship in such a way that the center of gravity may shoot above the 
the meta center it may go like here somewhere so that time the gm becomes a negative gm is negative means g is above the meta center so in this case the ship may go for the unstable condition so these are the consequences are there when you are going to load unload or shift the cargo within the ship so whenever you are going to load the cargo you have to see the value of a gm it should be within the range which is prescribed for the particular ship so you have to keep in your mind this thing and then you have to start loading the ship nowadays we have a very good softwares are available in a ship that is called as a loadicator so in earlier days when the loadicator software was not there with us that time the the deck officer has to do these calculations before they reach to the arriving port so these officers will get the information from the port that these are the cargoes we are going to load or unload at this particular port and accordingly the deck officer will do the calculation and he will find out he or she will find out the location of the each and every cargo each and every cargo within the ship so that the gm will be within the range but nowadays we have a very good software is available that is called as a loadicator in this software you will get all the uh, data from the arriving port that data you have to substitute uh, in the loadicator and the loadicator itself give a complete plan where you have to load or unload the cargo where you have to keep individual cargo so that the gm will be within the range now it is work is a very easy so in in upcoming all the classes we are going to discuss what is the effect of a loading and unloading or the shifting shifting the cargo within the ship on the location of the center of gravity indirectly i am saying that uh, on the uh, on the value of a gm so that all the calculation we are going to start doing in this in this lecture so before starting the actual numericals of the ship to find out the new center of gravity of the ship when the cargo is loaded unloaded or shifting within the ship to understand that concept we will take a small concept of the beam in case of a beam how it will work if you understood these things you can easily understand the problems related to the ship so let's take one beam and uh, the total weight of the beam is a capital w and that is going to act through the center of gravity of this uh, beam now this beam is supported just below the center of gravity of the uh, beam and this point you can call as a fulcrum so this whole beam is supported below the center of gravity of the beam now if you observe physically that uh, this although this beam is supported only at one location you will find that uh, the beam is not going to oscillate on the right side or the left side why this is happening because there is no movement is going to generate about the fulcrum why because the total weight is going to pass through the fulcrum only what is the meaning of a movement so to understand this let me give you one more example suppose the same fulcrum is there and this is the center of gravity and the weight of, of this whole whole beam is going to pass through this center of gravity now consider that uh, this beam i am going to support at this location so in this case this is the fulcrum then if i ask if i ask in this case whether this beam is going to oscillate or not or the beam is going to incline or not then you can directly say that yes sir it will going to incline uh, towards the right side like this so why it is going to incline what is the thing is happening here we will try to understand mathematically it's like uh, there is some movement generating about the fulcrum position what is the meaning of a movement movement is 
फोर्स इंटू अ परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस नाउ इन दिस केस आई एम गोइंग टू टेक द मूवमेंट अबाउट दिस फलकरम पोजिशन एंड हियर फोर्स मीन्स यू हैव अ वेट हियर वेट इन टू द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द फलक्रम एंड द सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी लोकेशन थ्रू विच द फोर्स इज गोइंग टू एक्ट दैट इज अ वेट लेट मी कॉल दिस डिस्टेंस इज अ डी सो मूवमेंट गोइंग टू जनरेट दैट इज डब्ल्यू इन टू डी एंड वट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दिस मूवमेंट दैट विल बी इन अ क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन सो दिस इज द मूवमेंट विच इज जनरेटिंग अबाउट दिस फलक्रम and because of this movement this bar or the beam is going to incline the towards the right side now what i am going to do this is the whole beam is there and the center of gravity is g through which the total weight is going to act i am going to support this beam just below the center of gravity so in this case there is no perpendicular distance between the center of gravity and the fulcrum that is zero so there is no movement is going to generate about the fulcrum so that there is no movement it means that there is no inclination of the beam that's the reason this beam is remains in a stable condition okay now what i am going to do i am going to remove some of the portion of this beam from this end let me call here i am going to cut the small portion from this beam and weight of this the small portion is a w so for the removing purpose i am going to show the arrow in upward direction so again try to understand physically think that uh, the everything is happen in front of you you have initially the beam is in a stable condition there is no movement is going to generate and there is no inclination on the right side or at the left side you have removed some mass from the right side what will happen physically try to understand that the beam is going to oscillate or incline towards the beam is going to incline towards the left side and this the total portion i am going to show now this portion we have removed so why this is happening what is the reason again try to understand the concept which we have seen earlier so in this case what is actually happening there is some movement generating about the fulcrum why the movement is generating i was telling that here the center of gravity is passing through the uh, fulcrum only then why the movement is generating here the reason is when i have removed the weight from the right side now the new center of gravity of the remaining bar is going to generate and that will be towards the left side towards the left side somewhere here it will be towards the left side i i will call as a g1 so the new center of gravity will be at a g1 and through this g1 now the weight is going to act that is the total weight of the bar minus the weight which is removed that uh, removed that is small w now in this case the weight is passing through the new center of gravity that is a g1 and the fulcrum is remains at the same position now if you see now there is going to generate some movement about the the fulcrum because now the weight is not passing through the g the weight is passing through g1 and because of that there will be some movement generating in the anti clockwise direction and that movement is equal to w minus w that is a force into perpendicular distance from the new g to the fulcrum that perpendicular distance is a g g1 so like this you can calculate the movement and that will be in a anti clockwise direction and because of this movement only the the beam is inclined towards the left side now when the beam is inclining towards the left side we have seen the mathematical reason for this this is the movement is generating now if you see if you want to write if you want to write the movement generated towards the anti clockwise direction we can write in another way also and that movement will be small w into the perpendicular distance between the g the old center of gravity 
to the center of gravity location of the weight which is removed that is the distance is a small d so that moment is small w into this small d this moment also in the anti clockwise direction now because of this both the moments m1 and m2 the effect will be remain same the beam is inclining towards the left side only the effect is remain same but way of writing the moment is a different if you have some numbers with you and if you substitute all the numbers here in both the moment formula the answers will come same so mathematically there are two ways to write the moment but the effect will be remain same this beam is inclining towards the left side so what i am going to do now i am going to equate this both the moments as the magnitude and the direction of the both the moments are same so i can write like this w minus small w into g g1 is equal to moment that is m2 small w into d i want to calculate the g g1 that will be w into d divided by w capital w minus small w so what we have got here we got the location of the new center of gravity with respect to the the initial center of gravity so what is this formula says to us that at the numerator you have a small w into d this is one moment so you can say this this is a moment generated because of a removal of the mass about the the reference point in this case it is a fulcrum that is at the numerator and what is at the denominator we have a w minus a small w so what is the meaning of this you can say this is a final mass after the removing of that weight the final e what is the weight is the remains that is a w minus a w so you can write a in general g g1 is equal to the moment generated because of the removal of the mass divided by the final mass now this case is related to the removal of the mass let's consider the second case again i will take as a same bar the weight of this bar is a capital w that is passing through the the initial center of gravity g and the, it is supported by the fulcrum just below the center of gravity now what i am going to do i will add some cargo on the right side so for the addition i will show the downward arrow and that cargo or the weight you can say the small w so in this case what will happen the new center of gravity will shift towards the right side so wherever you are adding the weight the new center of gravity is going to shift towards that side so let me call that as a g1 now the total weight is going to act through the new center of gravity now what is the total weight of the whole system including the beam that will be capital w plus a smaller w now if you think physically what will happen if you add any weight towards the right side what will happen because of this this beam is going to incline so why this is happening again the same thing there is some moment going to generate about the fulcrum so what is that moment is going to generate again you can write the moment in the two ways the first thing i can call as a moment m1 that is the total weight capital w plus small w into the perpendicular distance from the fulcrum to the new center of gravity that is a g g1 and m2 you can write a small w into the distance between the fulcrum and the location of the the new mass which is added that is a smaller d so m2 becomes a small w into d so these both the moments are same in the magnitude and the direction the only way of writing the mathematically different but the effect is a same so we can equate both the moments w plus capital w plus small w 
into g g1 into small w into d so you can find out the g g1 is equal to small w into d divided by capital w plus small w again here you can see try to analyze the numerator is a moment generated because of the addition of the weight and at the bottom or at the denominator you have a final mass so in this case final mass is a w capital w plus small w let's consider the third case where i am going to shift the i am going to shift the cargo or you can say the weight which is already uh, there on the object or which is already there on the beam in this case so consider that uh, there is a one small cargo is there which is kept on the center of gravity of the whole beam so this is the weight of this cargo is a small w weight of this cargo is small w try to understand here this small w is the part of a capital w it is not addition it is not addition the small w is the part of this capital w which is already included in the capital w okay so this is the difference between the addition and the which is already present on the beam so what i am going to do now i am going to shift the uh, the weight from here, from the center to the left side somewhere for example here so how much distance it the the uh, this weight is traveling that is a, a small w now the weight is here this weight is here now what will happen when this uh, weight is shifted towards the left side the center of gravity of the whole system also shifted towards the left side now in this case what will be the total weight the total weight remains same because this small w is a part of a capital w only so the weight is not going to change the weight will be remain same the only the position of the center of gravity is shifted from the uh, capital g to g1 now when it is shifted towards the left side what will happen there will be a movement generated towards the anti clockwise direction so again there are two movements in this case we can understand here first movement m1 that is a capital w into g g1 and m2 is a small w into d both the movements are the same in a magnitude and a direction so you can equate both the movements so it will be w into g g1 into small w into d you can calculate g g1 is equal to small w d divided by capital w so try to understand here what is the difference between the earlier two different formulas and this formula in this case you can see the numerator is remains same what is this numerator that is a moment generated because of the shifting the mass that everything everywhere in all the three formulas this point is the same so the only thing is going to change that is a, a denominator that will be a final mass that will be a final mass so in case of uh, shifting the uh, mass within the uh, system in this case the final mass will be remains as that of a initial mass because we are not adding any weight here or we are not removing any weight here so final mass will be remains the same as that of earlier so in general if you want to write the formula for the the new center of gravity location from the old center of gravity it will be moment generated so in general you can write the formula of uh, shifting the center of gravity from the old center of gravity that is g g1 is equal to the moment generated due to the addition removing or shifting the weight divided by the final weight or the final mass so how the formula just to summarize the earlier things how the formula looks like 
if you are adding the weight the g g1 will be small w into d divided by the final mass in addition in adding the weight it will be w plus small w when you are removing the weight the formula becomes like this g g1 is equal to w into d divided by the final mass is at w minus small w as you are removing the weight and in case of shifting the weight the g g1 becomes small w into d divided by the capital w so in this case there won't be any plus w or minus w the initial weight and the final weight will be remains the same we are only shifting the cargo i hope uh, everything is uh, clear uh, we will uh, start a discussion on uh, uh, how this thing is applicable in case of a ship in the next class thank you very much